In this example, we're going to investigate the various truth possibilities of the statement if P, then not P or not Q. To begin with, we first want to list out the possible combinations of P and Q. And there are four possible combinations. Any time that you just have two simple statements, such as P and Q, you will always have these same four possible combinations of truth values. We have the one situation in which both P and Q are true. And in that situation we're trying to determine whether this statement would then be true or false. The second possible um, situation is that P is true but Q is false. And then again in that second situation we'll try and determine whether this final statement is either true or false. Third possible combination, P is false and Q is true. We'll try and figure out what that means uh, for this statement. And then a uh, fourth possible combination, what if P and Q are both false? What does that mean for this statement? Would it be true or would it be false? Okay, to uh, do this uh, in the way that's shown in the textbook, what we're going to do is first break this large statement up um, into its smaller statements. You can think of this as um, order of operations in that we're sort of working uh, from the innermost uh, simplest statement out to the, the outermost uh, largest statement. So uh, looking at this expression, uh, we would want to start by evaluating what's in parentheses. And we see that there are two things. Uh, there's an OR statement inside the parentheses and there's a negation inside the parentheses. Um, now in terms of which has to be done first, uh, we first have to negate Q before we can then do the OR statement which is either P or not Q. Uh, so before we can evaluate that OR statement we first have to evaluate the not Q. Right, so um, the negation of Q, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our Q column and we're going to go down the list and we're going to negate. So in the first instance, we see that Q is true. The negation of that would be false. In the second instance, Q is false. The negation of that would be true. In our third instance, Q is true again, and so the negation is false. And in the last situation, Q is false, and so again the negation uh, would be true. Okay, so uh, we've done the negation of Q. Now we want to do this statement that's in parentheses, P or not Q. So in this instance, we're doing an OR statement. Um, on one side of this OR statement, we have P. So um, as we look at P, we want to look at this column. Uh, on the other side of the OR, we have NOT Q. So then we also want to be looking at this column. Now we're going to do an OR statement. And an OR statement is true as long as one or the other um, of these two statements is true. So in this first situation, P is true, therefore the OR statement is true. In our second situation, both P and Q are true, so again, we have a true statement. In the third situation, both P and NOT Q are false. Therefore, the OR statement is also false. And in the last statement, we see that NOT Q is true. Therefore, P or NOT Q would also be true. So as you're evaluating the different types of uh, statements, whether it's a negation or an OR statement, 
um, or as we'll do here at the very end, an, an if-then statement. Um, your choice of what whether to put a true or false will depend on what type of statement it is and what particular combinations of inputs you have. Okay, so uh, we've done um, the negation of Q and now we have done an OR statement. Okay. Once we have now evaluated what's in parentheses, the next thing to do is to negate that statement. You'll see that there's a negation in front of those parentheses and that's the next thing that we have to do. Um, so we're going to look at this statement and then we're going to negate it. Alright, so in the first instance the statement is true. That means that its negation is false. In the second situation, uh, we have the same thing. We have another false. In the third situation, we see that the statement is false. Therefore, when we negate it, we're going to get a true statement. And then in the last situation, we have a true statement. So when we negate it, uh, the negation should be false. Okay. And so now we have negated uh, the statement P or not Q. Okay. So now um, we're ready to evaluate the truthfulness of the entire statement. We have uh, the right hand side here of this conditional statement, what's called the consequent. And its truth values are listed here. The left hand side, or what's called the antecedent, is simply P and its truth values are listed here. So what we want to now do is an if-then statement with this antecedent condition and this consequent following from that. We know that an if-then statement is true except in one situation and that situation occurs when the antecedent condition is true but the consequent condition is false. Whenever you have that particular combination of inputs the if-then statement is a false statement. So you can see here in the second situation we have that same thing again. We have a true antecedent with a false consequent. That's the only time that an if-then statement is false. In any other situation it will be true, so therefore uh, the remaining two statements are both true. And so now we have completely determined the truth table for this statement. We know that when P and Q are both true, then this statement is false. If P is true, but Q is false, then we know that the final statement will be false. If P is false and Q is true, the final statement will be true. And if P and Q are both false, the final statement will be true. So we've determined in each of the four possible combinations of inputs uh, what the final output will be. The rest of this is just intermediate work. Um, some, of, some of this you could do in your head, but if you want to write it all out, uh, this would be akin to showing all of your work.